Hello everyone and welcome to another Pixel Game Maker tutorial. Today we're going to go over the two runtime actions apply filter effects on object and delete filter effects from object. And we're going to go into the the basics that most people can understand just from looking at it but we're also going to go into some of the things that could arise from using this runtime actions and using some other settings such as a hit related setting or an invincibility related setting where it also applies a filter. So we'll, we'll take into all these considerations and we'll go from there. So the first thing we're going to go over is the apply filter effects. And you'll see that we have a list of the effects on the left side. And then we have this slider, which is the percentage of that effect on this object. So we'll just go through all of them just so you can see what it looks like. At 100% noise, for instance, when we preview it, we can see that it turns into this noisy uh, kind of filter. Now, it took a second to get to 100% because down here, it's until time completion is set to 1. If I had this set to 0 and I previewed it again, we could see that it instantly will go to noise filter. So I'm just going to leave it at 0 from now on, but this is how you would change how long it takes to get to the end uh, result. And just real quick for noise filter only, I'm just going to show you what it would look like at 50% so that you can see that this percentage will only do a certain amount. So you can still see the sprite for the most part, but the filter is about 50% over the sprite, covering the sprite. All right, so we'll leave that at 100. I'll leave the rest of these at 100 for the rest of this, but now we'll look at mosaic. And just really pixelates it. And again, I guess for this one, I'll do a 50% as well. So you can see the difference. This one's a little different because it won't be as pixelated. So it's better to see this one less. Then we can go to monochrome. And a lot of these filters you can find in imaging editing softwares. So what's nice is that you don't have to make a sprite sheet for it. You can just apply a filter. There are certain limitations. Let's do sepia. I think that's how you say it. And there are certain limitations, and that is that like hit related effects settings and invincibility related settings, this is invert. Uh, when, they, when you have a filter applying with those, they share the same filter. So we have to be aware of that when we're, when we're doing filters. And here's blur. Uh, blur would be a good one, mainly in screen effect for when you're pulling up a menu or something. Chromatic aberration. I believe this is the one where it pulls apart the colors, the red, green, and blue. Yeah, you can see kind of minimally on this, but if I did it on the HUD, you would see it pull apart the colors a lot better. Uh, darken. So this is how you can control the uh, color of it. So there we go. And then let's just do 50% on this one. You can see that it just darkens it a little bit and not a ton. And let's move on to transparency. So obviously 100% is going to be none. And then if we did 50%, slightly see through it. So now if we chose blink, here we have to set the blink interval so how often will it blink? And right now it's set to zero. So if we did this, it should be transparent, I think, because you're blinking constantly. Okay, so it just doesn't work actually. So yeah, you have to set an interval. So if you set it at, say, half a second, 0.5, and we previewed it, it should blink every half a second. Now this will keep blinking until it's turned off, so until you delete it. So this next one's pretty interesting, the show image. So you're showing an image as the filter. And if we were to pick a image, let's just say this fire icon here, and you pick its transparency, which I'll just leave at zero so it's fully visible, you can see that all of a sudden a fire image will appear and it stays with you as you move. Now do note that this will show the whole image so say that you're trying to do a sprite sheet, for instance, of say player two in this case, and if you previewed it, 
you would see the whole sprite sheet as the filter. So this last one right here is apply select a color. This is probably my favorite one. You can use it to blend colors if you're selecting an item in the menu or give a quick flash if the players hit manually. And so you have your options of opacity. So how transparent is this filter? One thing you have to know is that this filter is a solid color. So if you're full opacity with it, let's just leave it like this as a full white with 255 opacity. If I was to preview it, the sprite is literally going to be completely white. So do know if you want a more smoother color with the sprite, you'll have to adjust this opacity. And usually I find even something like 200 could work. So if we previewed it like this, you can see that you can see the sprite a little bit more. And maybe you would even need more, 150, and you would just keep playing with the opacity until you got that, the desired uh, color that you want. Uh, you could do the same, say you want your hit to be red. I'll put the opacity down to 100. Say you want your hit to be red, you can just adjust the hues, get the red color, go to preview, and there you got a, a red filter over the uh, sprite. All right, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this as white here. And then also, I'm gonna adjust this color back to say 200. And I'm gonna show you just time till completion for this one so that we can see that it will just kind of blend, blend in the color like that. So it can look really cool. You pick a color, you can blend in, and then you can blend out. And there's a few different times that this looks really good. So now let's get into the delete filter effects. So I'm going to click OK because I'm going to I want this setting to apply, and then I'm going to add another runtime action, and we're going to select the delete filter. Now this is pretty standard. You can always just click the all filter effects, just delete them, or you can go and select the individual one if you know. For instance, in our case, we're only applying the select color, so I'm just going to select this. And what this is really handy for is if you have, say, filter of apply select the color for your hit related settings and your or your invincibility related settings, but you have another filter going on in your runtime action, say that I did a filter of invert. Well, when I go to delete that invert, because I might not want it the whole time, I could delete the invert only and still let the hit effects or invincibility related effects delete itself on its own. So that way I'm not, so so do be careful of using the all filter effects just as a generic thing because you could be inadvertently deleting effects that other sources are applying filters on. So just keep that in mind. In our case it's not a big deal. I could use all filter effects and it'd be fine. And then here you can just say time until completion. So again, it's the fade out of that filter. And in our case, we could just do a one second and it would fade out. And so real quick, I wanna show you these other settings I'm talking about, just in case you're unfamiliar. Uh, here is invincibility related settings. And then here is the received damage settings. So if I was to click okay on these and they add the tabs up here, so invincibility related settings, if I was to add an invincibility relating setting, one of the things I can do is do an object filter. And when I double click into it, I get the same settings that you get for a filter. So when I would apply this filter, however it happened, and so what this would do is apply it while I'm invincible with this setting, um, it would delete itself after the invincibility wore off. It just automatically d does that. So what I was saying by that delete all is that if I I'm applying a selected color, let's say, in in this filter, and then I'm applying a invert on a runtime action, which was the example I used, then it would, and, and I had delete all selected, it would delete even the invincibility related setting. So that's what I was saying we need to be careful of. If we go to receive damage, it's the same thing. If I add a receive damage here, and I click on the object filters, and I added a filter, it would be the same thing. I don't want to delete my filter. I want the received damage to delete that filter. So just keep in mind of that. I hope that made sense. 
but now we can just see how this will behave now with apply filter effects and delete filter effects. And just like this, so I'm just going to leave it like this and just see what happens. And when the game loads, and now I have to press A to get it to activate, we can see that nothing happens. And that's because the delete filter is sort of taking over at this point, and it just, it's not allowing the apply filter to even show at all. So what we have to do usually is we need to couple it with a weight runtime action. So if we go to the third setting here and click on weight, we can add at least a 0.1, and we can then drag that in between the apply and the delete. And then we can just see what happens here, because there might be some other things that happen. Let's take a look. And so now when I press A, you can see that it actually works as intended. It goes instant filter and then it fades out for a second. One more thing to note is that sometimes common actions will not seem like it's transferring a filter correctly. And it's mainly because it's really hard to keep track of a common action. For instance, common actions will go right back to the runtime action after they're ran, unless you're executing object action somewhere else. And so when you're doing that kind of things, the filter can get lost and you might need to add delete filter in other actions that normally wouldn't have them, mainly just to keep track of that filter. So do note that the filter uh, does come with a, a little thinking, uh, especially if you're using the common action. I just wanted to bring that up. And yeah, that is it for the apply filter on object and delete filter from object. Uh, here are some cool examples of ways that I believe that this can really be useful. Obviously the other filters are, are really useful for, for a bunch of things, but we have this option for Pixel Maker and that's, that's about it. So I will see you at the next video.